Hey guys, it's Alexandra from ilovenots.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this floral mug rug. This is my Delilah mug rug. It starts with one flower motif worked in its entirety, and then the second flower is worked in a join as you go manner. The two half leaves are added in a join as you go manner as well, and then there is a border put on the entire thing which adds the corner leaves. And if you want to go a step further, you can add additional rounds to the border. So my original one stopped after the first round, and then the purple and yellow flower one, I went ahead and added one round, worked in the back loop only. This mug rug is designed to be larger than a coaster, as it's supposed to be able to house a snack and a drink which mine does. I will put a bagel on it or a muffin and my cup of coffee for this project. You're going to need some worsted weight yarn. I'm using We Crochet Dishy, which is a 100% cotton yarn. I like cotton for mug rugs as it is more absorbent and durable, but you can use anything that you have in your stash. I have some mug rugs in my collection that are worked in Red Heart Super Saver, which is a 100% acrylic yarn. One thing to remember about working with synthetic yarns like acrylic is that you can't put anything fresh out of the oven or fresh off the stove on top of it as it will melt the fibers. The fibers are just plastic and then you could burn yourself. So if you're going to use hot things that are hotter than a cup of coffee, you're going to want to make sure you have a cotton yarn. If it's just going to be for something like a cup of coffee and a snack or a candle, then you can use any yarn that you have in your stash. And if you want to change this up, do a lightweight yarn or chunky weight yarn. You can do that too. It'll just change the finished size of the mug rug. Together with this worsted weight yarn, I'm using an H8 5mm crochet hook. This is my favorite hook that I ordered from Sienna's Boutique on Etsy. I'll link it in the description box below as well as to some yarn recommendations. You're also going to find the written pattern linked in there. If you subscribe to my newsletter, you can get the PDF for it for free. Download it directly from the blog post. And you'll find more information about that in the PDF section of the blog post. This is one of my favorite motifs to work up. I've used it in a lot of different projects and done a variety of color combinations. So I'll go ahead and share some photos of other projects that I've done. You can see the color combinations. Feel free to experiment. Flowers come in a variety of colors. And if you're interested in any of these other projects, you'll find the links for them in the description box below. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a slip knot. So I've pulled the yarn over my fingers here. I'm going to wrap it around my index finger two times. Hold the tension with my thumb and my middle finger. Pull the loop on the left up over the other one but not off my finger. Then I'll pull the other one that's on the left now up over the other one I just moved and off my finger. Grab my crochet hook, insert it into the loop on my finger and pull it off. Hold the working yarn in my right hand, short tail end in my left. I'm going to pull that so this loop will go to normal tension. We're going to start with a chain 5 and then we're going to slip stitch join to form a ring. And then we'll work into that ring. If you are more comfortable doing a magic ring, you can do that. But I'm going to start with a chain 5. To chain, we yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Each time we do that, we're going to get one of these V-shaped stitches here. Each one of those is going to be a chain. So we don't count the loop on our hook. We have one, two, three chains so far. I'm going to continue adding a couple more so that I will have five. And now I want to slip stitch join to the first chain. So we're going to go all the way down to the bottom where we made that first chain. Hold the tension of the loop on my hook. Bring it horizontally. 
insert my hook right into the center of that first chain, then yarn over, pull through that stitch, and through the loop that's on my hook. And now we've slip stitch joined and we have this ring here in the center to work into. We have a hole at the top where we just joined to. We want to make sure we don't work into that. That's just going to open up a little bit because this knot is not secured yet. But we want to work into that larger ring underneath. We're going to work 12 double crochets into this center ring. So we're going to start with a chain 2 and this chain 2 does not count as a stitch. Now we'll yarn over, insert our hook right into the center of that ring. When you do that you're going to have a chain sitting on top of your hook. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through. Right now we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. That's going to complete our first double crochet. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook back into the center ring. As we continue to work we're going to have that tail end held to the back of the chains. So we'll have the chain on our hook as well as that tail end. Yarn over, pull through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into that center ring. You have the chain and the tail end on your hook. Yarn over, pull through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. So right now I'm going to pull this out real quick. We're going to look to the top. We have these V shapes here at the top. Each one of those is going to be a stitch. So we have one, two, three double crochets. We're going to continue working so that we have 12 double crochets. And now that we have 12 double crochets, we're going to slip stitch join to the first stitch of the round. And if you're not sure where the first stitch is, it's really helpful to count backwards from where you just finished. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we want to insert our hook underneath both loops of that first stitch. Then yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop that's on our hook to complete a slip stitch. And now our first round is complete. I'm going to pull up a loop here. This center ring that we have, we can hold on the back side in between our middle finger and our index finger where the tail end is coming out of the center. And I have my thumb on the front. Go ahead and tug on that strand. Don't pull too tight or your strand can tear. So just pull it a little bit and it will close that up. We're going to secure that completely close when we go to weave in our ends. We're going to have one more round in this same color. We're going to start with a chain two. Again, that does not count as a stitch. I like to work my increases a little bit different. That's what I'm going to show you here at the beginning and at the end. But if you're more comfortable just working two stitches into this first stitch, go ahead and do it. But I'm going to work one double crochet into this very first stitch that my chain is coming out of. Making sure to pick up both loops there. Then I'm going to work two double crochets into the next stitch. And I'm going to continue to work two double crochets into each stitch all the way around until I get back to the beginning. And once I get back over here, I'm going to have my last set of two worked into this stitch right here. And then I'm going to have one stitch that I'm going to work into that same stitch as the chain. At the end of this round, we're going to have 24 double crochets. So I had one in the first stitch, then two in that next stitch makes three, two in the next stitch makes five. I'm going to keep counting as I work all the way around so that I know after I get to 23 right here, I have one more stitch left. And there we are at the end of the round. I have 23 complete with my last set of two. I'm going to work one more stitch into this next stitch, which is the same stitch that my chain is coming out of. My hook is just being inserted here to the right. And the stitch will come out to the right of the chain as well. 
That's going to complete 24 stitches. Now I need to slip stitch join and when I do that I'm going to bring in my new color. So let me show you the way that is my favorite way to make a seamless color change. I'm going to insert my hook under both loops of that first double crochet. And if you're not sure where the first double crochet is, remember you can use those V shapes at the top there to count backwards from where you just finished. Insert my hook there under both loops, yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop on my hook. That actually is the slip stitch joint to complete the round. Then I'm going to put this down. I'm going to grab my new color, which is going to be white. I'm going to form a loop here near the end leaving a tail end long enough that I can comfortably weave in. It's actually a little bit too much. And then I'm going to put this loop on my hook. So I'm going to hold the tension of the loop that's currently on there with my index finger. Put the loop on my hook. Hold the tension of the strands on the back. That way this loop on my hook doesn't really go anywhere. And I'm going to pull this new color through. Then I'm going to grab that original strand and I'm going to give it a tug so this yellow loop that you see there will disappear. Then I'm going to drop that to the back, drop the tail end of the new color to the back, and then I'm going to grab my working yarn, pull it down to normal tension, and start with a chain one. If that yellow loop pops back up, you just go to the back, find the tail end, and give it a tug, and it will disappear again. This is my favorite way to change colors for this project to get the most seamless color change right here. You can change in the last yarn over of the final slip stitch here at the end of round two, but it completely disrupts the color change right here. And the stitches from this round are going to pull on the yellow stitches, and it really just distorts it in a way that it's not very pretty. So if you don't want to change this using this method that I just showed you to get the same look, you can slip stitch join at the end of round two with the yellow, then fasten off, and then reattach your new color into the first stitch. But to save me a little trouble so I don't have to go that extra step, I just go ahead and change in this manner instead. Now I'm ready to do round three, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and fasten off the yellow. So just leave a tail end long enough to weave in. And now I'm ready to go for round three. We're going to work a single crochet into this very first stitch. Insert your hook into that stitch underneath both loops. Yarn over, pull through. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops. Then we're going to skip the next stitch, and in that next stitch, we're going to work three double crochets. So I've yarned over, insert my hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. That's one double crochet. I'm going to continue working. So I have three double crochets, and I'm going to insert my hook all into the same stitch. So now I have three double crochets complete. One, two, three. I'm going to chain two. And I'm going to work three more double crochets back into that same stitch. So there's going to be six in total, all worked into the same stitch. This is going to create one of our petals. Then I'm going to skip the next stitch. And in the next stitch, I'm going to work a single crochet. Insert my hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. And then I'm going to pull up a loop really quick. Those six stitches in that chain are going to form our petal there, and the single crochets on both sides are going to create that curve and anchor it in place. It's going to help us with the shaping. So our repeat throughout the whole thing actually starts with the single crochet we just finished, it's going to be single crochet into that next stitch, skip the next stitch, and then in the next stitch we're going to make another petal. 
So we're skipping this next stitch here and in this next stitch we're going to do three double crochets. All worked into that same stitch, then chain two, then three more double crochets worked back into that same stitch. And then skip the next stitch. Then our repeat begins in the next stitch, single crochet, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. That's now just anchored our petal. Then skip the next stitch, and in that next stitch, three double crochets. Chain two and three double crochets back into that same stitch. Then we skip the next stitch. Then the repeat again, single crochet in the next stitch, skip the next stitch, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets into the next stitch, skip the next stitch. You're going to continue that all the way around until you're back to the beginning. Right now we have three petals. We're going to have six petals at the end of this round. And then we'll join together. Here at the end, I worked my last petal. I have one stitch left that I'm going to leave unworked. And then we're going to slip stitch join. To get the angle here to match the rest of them, I'm actually going to work my single crochet into the double crochet that the first single crochet was worked into. So that's the yellow double crochet underneath. So I'm going to insert my hook into that same stitch that that first single crochet is coming out of and then yarn over and pull through and pull through the loop on my hook. And I'm going to pull up a loop here really quick. This is going to help keep the look here the same as the others. But if you don't like the way that that looks, instead you can slip stitch join to the first single crochet or you could even slip stitch join to the first double crochet. You can experiment a little bit with it. Now I'm going to fasten off. Just make sure to leave a tail end long enough that you can comfortably weave in. Then pull up on this loop to break it. And now when I weave in my ends, I am going to secure these two layers closed. Because right now where I slip stitch joined, this top is open. So I'm just going to secure that closed when I go ahead and weave in my ends. Go ahead and grab your tapestry needle and meet me back here so we can finish up this flower. Alright, I'm going to flip this to the back. I'm going to go for that center tail first. Thread it into my tapestry needle. I'm going to work clockwise underneath those stitches all the way until I get back to the beginning. So I'm just going to insert underneath a couple stitches at a time. And this here is going to put me back at the beginning. I'm actually going to work a couple more stitches past that. And when I come out of that last stitch, I'm going to break that stitch in half with my needle. I'm going to come out through the center of it, and that's going to help capture my yarn. Hold the fabric in between your fingers as you pull so it doesn't pull on that last stitch that you came out of. Now you have that hole there in the center. Hold the fabric in between your fingers and give that strand a tug. And remember not to pull too tight. You just want to close it up, but you don't want to break your strand. Then you're going to rotate your fabric and you're going to work back in the same direction you just came from. Inserting into a nearby stitch. I always break my stitches in half when I enter and exit. I don't pick up the whole stitch on my needle here like this. Instead, I insert right into the center of it to break it in half. 
That's going to help capture my yarn so that it is more secured. So I'm inserting into a nearby stitch and then I'm going to run vertically through several of those same stitches I just worked through. And when I exit, I'm going to break that last stitch in half as well. Then I'm going to hold on to the fabric in between my fingers. I'm going to pull that needle through, give it a tug, then go back and use my fingers to manipulate the fabric if I need to, if it's distorted the fabric. We want it to lay naturally. I like to do three passes. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it, insert into a nearby stitch here, breaking it in half, run vertically through several of those same stitches, and then break my last stitch in half when I exit as well. If you feel secure after two, you can fasten off then. If you feel like you need to work a fourth one, you can do that too. Whatever you need to feel secure with your ends. Give it a tug, use my fingers to manipulate the fabric if I need to, and then I'm ready to fasten off. Now I'm going to go ahead and come here to this last stitch that I fastened off at the end, thread that into my tapestry needle, and I'm going to bring it here from the right side, which is the front, down to the wrong side, which is the back, through that first single crochet there. So you just want to sew the two layers together and since it's sitting right on top of that stitch that's where I'm going to go ahead and insert my needle right into the center of that first stitch through both loops and come out on the back side and you'll see the placement there if you don't like the way the placement looks now then go ahead and take it out and move your stitch over to the left or over to the right wherever you need so that the stitch placement looks the way you want it to finish then Flip to the back side and for weaving in this I want to keep the white together so that it doesn't pop through any of the yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and come here to the left of where I am. I'm going to bring my needle just wrapping it around one of the stitches there nearby so that I can get it over into the bulkiness of this petal over here. So I'm not weaving in, I'm just wrapping it around stitches so that it doesn't have any floats. It's nice and even. Blends in there on the back. I'm going to do it one more time here with the stitch next to it on the left coming from underneath this time so that it wraps around there. And then I'm going to do it again in this next stitch here and it's going to bring me into position to work horizontally through the bulkiness of this petal. So I'm just going to wrap around one more stitch right here, just underneath where I am. And now I'm right next to the opening for the petal. So I'm going to go ahead, break that first stitch in half here, and run horizontally through the bulkiness of those stitches from that petal, breaking my last stitch in half when I exit. Then hold on to the fabric in between my fingers. It's going to help so that it doesn't distort any of your fabric. Give it a tug and then manipulate your fabric. It's important to make sure it's laying naturally and it hasn't bunched up from where you pulled from the beginning here. Then rotate your fabric. Insert into a nearby stitch, breaking it in half. Run back through several of those same stitches there in the same bulkiness and break the last stitch in half when you exit. Hold onto the fabric, pull it through, give it a tug, manipulate if you need to. One more pass for me, we'll make three. I'm going to manipulate it here using my needle to help me separate my stitches. I want to make sure it doesn't look bunched up. And then I can go ahead and fasten off. 
Now I'm going to weave in these last two ends using the same exact method, but this yellow one here from round two, I'm going to weave it vertically into these double crochet stitches here. That's going to help hide it so the stitches don't bunch up horizontally. So just run it vertically up and down here. This other white one, I'm going to wrap it around my stitches to get me in place so that I can work through the bulkiness of this other petal here. Same way as I did this first one. And once I get those two in, then the whole flower will be ready to go. For the second flower, you're going to work rounds one and two up and then change colors the same way as you did in the first flower. So that is a ring, 12 double crochets into the ring for round one, 24 double crochets for round two, and then switch colors to the color that you're going to use for your petals for round three. If you need a refresher on how to work that, you can pop down into the description box below where the timestamp is and click on the one that you'd like to see. It will jump you back in the video. Once you get to this point right here, we're going to start working the petals, but we're going to join as you go to connect it to the other flower. Whether that's the first flower or you have a string of flowers, you're going to do them all the same way for the first row. So. I've switched colors and I've chained one. I'm going to go ahead and single crochet into the first stitch as normal. I'm going to go ahead and tighten my stitches up here. Skip the next stitch, work your petal into the next stitch with three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, skip the next stitch, work your petal into the next stitch, three double crochets, then chain two, three double crochets. Skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. So right now we have two complete petals and we've worked a single crochet after that second petal. Skip the next stitch. In the next stitch you're just going to work three double crochets, the first half of the petal. Then you're going to chain one and then we're going to join this to the other flower. When you are attaching it, it's important that your flowers all face the same way so they have the same appearance. So I'm gonna find where I joined the last stitch of my petal. That is going to line up where we started round three. Right now in the flower that's in my hand, which is my first flower, on the bottom middle is the very first single crochet. I'm going to be working into the chain space of the petal that is to the right of it. So I'm going to set this down right in front of the flower I'm currently working in the position I want to attach it. The reason why we do a chain one here instead of a chain two is because the stitch we're going to use to attach it is going to count as the second chain or the second stitch. Grab the flower you're joining to and just pick it up so you can see the back of it. This is how we're going to attach our flowers from the back of it. So right here, this is the front of the flower we're looking at. Just grab that petal we're attaching to and flip the fabric up so I can see the back of the petal. Insert my hook right into the center of that chain space from the petal just to the right of that first stitch that I told you we were going to attach to. We're looking at the back of it, inserting right into the center of the chain space. Then 
yarn over and pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops to complete a single crochet. Now go back to the flower you're currently working on and into the same stitch that you worked those three double crochets, work three more double crochets to complete that petal. Skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to pull up a loop here. You can see that your two flowers are now connected by that single crochet that you worked into the chain space of that previous flower. We're going to join the next petal that we're about to work into that petal that is to the left of that first stitch. So the first one is joined into the petal to the right of that first stitch when it's at the bottom center. The next petal will be joined into the chain space to the left of it. So let's go back here and start our next petal. We're going to skip the next stitch and in the next stitch we're going to work three double crochets. chain one only, holding the working yarn in your hand so you're ready to go. Go to your previous flower that you're going to connect it to, flip the fabric up so you can see the back side of it, and insert your hook into that chain space of that next petal. So you're working from the back side or the wrong side to the right side of the fabric. Then yarn over, pull through, two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. Then go back to your current flower and finish that petal with three more double crochets worked into the same stitch. Skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, and then I'll pull up a loop here. And now you can see that both of your petals are connected by these two chain spaces and then you have just a little gap right in between them. And now what you're going to do is you're going to finish working this flower as normal, working the rest of the repeat so you'll complete the six petals. Right now we have four. So you just finished a single crochet, you'll skip the next stitch, work three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets into the next stitch, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, that'll give you the fifth petal and then you'll work the same for the sixth petal. Join as normal, fasten off your yarn, and if you want to weave in your ends as you go, I definitely recommend it so you don't end up with too many ends at the end. Or wait until you get a little bit further. We're going to have a couple more ends to weave in as we go. If you need a refresher on adding any more of the petals, you can pop down into the description box below to the timestamp for round three of the first flower. For the mug rug, this is as many flowers as we're going to have. We're going to have just two flowers connected to each other. I will see you once you join and fasten off your flowers and you're ready to go with the leaves and the border. We're going to go ahead and start the leaves. Now that I have my two flowers joined together, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the half leaves. I'm going to do that with another tutorial that I have. You're going to be adding the half leaves here at the top and at the bottom right into the single crochets that are right in between the petals on both sides. I'm going to be showing you this using a tutorial from a different project, but it's going to be worked the same exact way. You'll have top and bottom worked. You're not adding anything to the sides because there's only one row of flowers here. So we'll get the corner petals made when we do the border. So go ahead and get your two half leaves made and then we'll add the border together. These two are pretty much work the same because you'll do this one here on the bottom, then you'll rotate it and you'll add that one at the top. So it is starting with a slip knot. Chain five. Slip stitch join to the first chain, chain two, 
two double crochets into that center ring. Chain one. We're gonna go ahead and work the first one here into the single crochet on the right side. So flip that to the back side, insert into the single crochet, and then complete a single crochet. Three double crochets back into the center ring. Chain one. Then the next one's gonna be over here in that single crochet to the left. Flip to the back side, insert into the single crochet and work a single crochet. And then finish this off with two double crochets back into that center ring. Then go ahead and fasten off. Pull up on this loop to break it. I'm going to finish mine off with one more half leaf on the right side now, so it'll actually complete the top and the bottom. Now that I have my two half leaves done, I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn for the border. I'm going to do it into the top right center chain space. I'm going to insert my hook into that chain space, grab the yarn, and pull it through. Tie a square knot, that's just one time. And then I'm going to insert my hook back into that chain space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through completes a chain one. This is how I like to attach my yarn. You can do it whichever is your favorite way. We're gonna go ahead and single crochet into the same chain space. Insert your hook into the chain space, yarn over and pull through. Two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. Then I'm going to chain four and then we're going to work into the half leaf. So you're going to tighten up that last stitch. You're going to work five stitches evenly into the side of that half leaf with the third one being worked into the center and then the first two split in that first double crochet and the last two split on the chain at the end. The first single crochet is going to be worked into the first half of the double crochet, inserting right into the center of that first part, yarn over, pull through, two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert my hook into the center of the second half of that double crochet, breaking that stitch in half and picking up two loops on the side, yarn over, pull through, two loops on my hook yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert my hook into the center ring, then complete a single crochet, then insert my hook into the first chain, right in the center of it, and then my last stitch of the half leaf is not going to be worked into the second chain, but instead it's going to be worked into the first double crochet underneath both loops of that V, and that's just gonna help keep it even. Then we'll chain four, and single crochet into the next chain space of the center petal on the left. Then we've reached our first corner, and the corner stitch is gonna be worked into the single crochet in between the petals. We're going to start with a treble crochet or a triple crochet. That's yarn over two times. Insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Then we'll work another treble crochet in there, yarn over two times, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Chain two. Now our corner most stitch is going to be a double treble, also called a quadruple crochet, worked into that same stitch, yarn over three times, so you have four loops on your hook, 
insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over and pull through, you now have five loops, yarn over, pull through two 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 loops, chain two. Now we'll finish it off with two treble crochets worked into that same stitch. We're yarning over two times, so there's three loops on the hook. That completes our corner. Now we'll single crochet into the chain space of that next petal. And that's going to anchor our corner in place. Now we'll continue here, chain two, half double crochet into that single crochet in between the petals, yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Then chain two, single crochet into the next chain space of the next petal. And then it's time for another corner. Two treble crochets, that's yarn over two times. Chain two double treble or quadruple crochet into that stitch, yarn over three times, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, 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 chain two, two treble crochets back into that same stitch, single crochet into the next chain space of the next petal. I'm going to pull up a loop here really quick before I continue on. Let's talk about shaping issues you may encounter here. It's possible that as you work the chain fours might arch over more. If it does that then it means there's too many stitches in there. So you'll want to go and take out a stitch, make it a chain three instead of a chain four. If it's caving in on itself, it means that it doesn't have enough stitches and you'll want to go and add a chain. So you would do a chain five instead of a chain four. Here on the side of the flower, the same exact thing after you work that single crochet after the corner. I've worked a chain two, but if yours is arching, you'll want to do a chain one. And if yours is caving in on itself, you'll want to do a chain three. This can vary depending on your tension. So if your tension is different than mine, you may need to adjust your stitches so that it lays flat. Now I'll put my hook back in here and continue on. And we're going to work it the same way as we did on the other side. That's going to be a chain four. Tighten up that last stitch of the half leaf. Evenly single crochet five stitches into the side of that half leaf. The first one's going to be in the first half of that first double crochet. Second one you insert into the center of the stitch, picking up two loops on your hook on the side. Third one's into the center ring. Fourth one is into the first chain, right in the center of it. And the fifth one is into the first double crochet not the second chain. Underneath both loops of that V, then chain four, single crochet into the next chain space of the next petal. Now we have another corner, two treble crochets into that stitch. chain two, double treble or quadruple crochet into that same stitch. Chain two, two treble crochets back into that same stitch. Chain 
single crochet into the next chain space of the next petal, chain two, half double crochet into the single crochet that's in between petals, yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops, chain two, single crochet into the next chain space of that next petal, then the last corner, two treble crochets into that next single crochet, chain two, double treble or quadruple crochet in there, chain two, two treble crochets back into the same stitch. Then slip stitch join to the first single crochet. Insert your hook underneath both loops of that single crochet. Yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop that's on your hook. I'm gonna pull up a loop really quick. I'm not gonna fasten off yet, but this round of the border is now complete. And if you'd like to stop here, then you absolutely can fasten off, pull up that loop to break it, and you have a finished mug rug. This is how I worked my original mug rug with just one round of the border. But I'm gonna go a step further this time and I'm gonna add one round of single crochet in the back loop only because I just love how that finish looks. Before I get started with that though, if this is where you're stopping for your mug rug and the stitches are looking a little wonky or misshapen, there's a couple ways that you can fix this and that's gonna be either at this point or if you add any more rounds to your border. You can use the same techniques for any place that you're stopping. Number one is going to be to block your finished piece. I do not like to block things, so I will not be doing that, but that is an option. Number two, adding additional rounds to the border always makes the border heavier and it makes it lay better. Number three is gonna be using your fingers to manipulate the fabric. So here in the center, you can see it's a little bit raised. I can just use my fingers to press down on the stitches and it's gonna even them out. Over here, I might pull out my stitches and then pull it out on the top, push it in on the side, and you'll notice that the shape starts to come together. Now I'm gonna show you how to work the single crochet in the back loop only using a different tutorial, but it's gonna be worked the same exact way. But if you wanna go ahead and fasten off now, you can as well. At least the foundation is there and it connects all those leaves and flowers and gives the fabric more stability. If you prefer regular single crochet, you could do that too, or you could even change up the stitch pattern here. Before we start, typically we insert our hook into the stitch down here, and that picks up two loops on our hook. On the bottom is going to be the front loop, and on the top is going to be the back loop. So when we work into the back loop only, we actually insert our hook from the top down into the center of the V and then push towards the back of the fabric so we get just the back loop only on our hook. Then we complete our stitch and we leave that front loop unworked which is going to create a ridge here along the edge. It's going to be a really pretty finish. So I'm going to start with a chain one. I'm going to insert my hook into this very first stitch that my chain is coming out of. Down into the center of the V, pushing towards the back of the fabric to get just the back loop only on my hook. Then yarn over and pull through. You have your two loops as normal, yarn over and pull through both loops. We're going to work into each of these chains here. There's four chains, so it will be four stitches. Inserting right into the center of the chain pushing towards the back to grab just that back loop only on our hook. Inserting right into the center of the V, grabbing just that back loop only on your hook. Now I've come to another single crochet here 
insert right into the top center of that V, pushing towards the back of the fabric, grabbing just the back loop only on my hook. And I'm going to continue working in this manner all the way around, working one stitch into each stitch and each chain all the way around until I get to the corner. When I get to the corner stitches, I need to increase so that the corners will continue to lay flat. So let me make my way over here to the quadruple crochet that's there. This is what it looks like so far. You can already see that ridge line forming there. And we've worked one stitch into each single crochet and one stitch into each chain. I've worked all the way up to the chain two of the corner and now the quadruple crochet is the next stitch. Because I'm gonna be working multiple stitches into this stitch, instead of working into the back loop only, I'm gonna grab the whole stitch as normal and because I'm working into the stitch and not into the back loop only, my stitch is going to be a little bit shorter. So to keep the height even, I'm going to work half double crochets here. Yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch as normal, picking up both loops, and then complete my half double crochet. Chain two, half double crochet back into that same exact stitch. And now my corner is complete. And I'm going to continue single crocheting into the back loop only of each chain and each stitch all the way across to the next corner. Once I get to the next corner, that quadruple crochet is always our corner stitch. I'm going to increase the same way. Inserting into the stitch as normal, picking up both loops, then work a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. This is going to give me a more square corner, which is what I like. If you prefer a more rounded corner, you could do single crochet, chain two single crochet, or three single crochets. Another way to do this more square corner is half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. You can experiment to see what you like. Just make sure that whatever you do to this first corner, you repeat in all the corners. You're gonna work this pattern all the way around until you're back to the beginning. And after we work into the last stitch, then we're going to slip stitch join. Here at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch underneath both loops because I'm gonna be finishing off after this round. But if you wanna add additional rounds to this border and you're gonna continue working in the back loop only, then you can slip stitch join in the back loop only and it'll help keep the pattern even. So if you wanna do it in the back loop only, you just insert your hook into that stitch picking up just the back loop only on your hook if you want to do it underneath both loops, then pick up both loops, yarn over, pull through that stitch and the one that's on your hook. And then you can go ahead and fasten off, leaving a tail end long enough to comfortably weave in. Pull up on this loop to break it. I like to bring it to the wrong side, so I'll insert my hook from the back to the front into the stitch I just slip stitched to. Yarn over with the tail end and pull it through to the back side. Now I'll go ahead and weave in all the remaining ends that I have. Now you're going to see after that foundation round is put on there that it's a lot easier to weave in these ends as you have these extra stitches here. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. You'll find the written pattern for it linked in the description box below. Let me know, are you going to be stopping after you work the first round of the border, or are you going to go a step further and add additional rounds to your border? I'd also love to know what color your flowers are going to be. It would help me out a lot if you smash that like button to let YouTube know you enjoyed this video, and subscribe while you're there, and I'll catch you in the next one.